In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. <clears throat> Every one of us has something that he or she treasures. A lot of people treasure money. They find safety in money. Uh, a lot of people treasure uh, image, so they care about their image and how people look at them, and this is so important to them, and they're willing to do anything that the image will not be touched, and if the image is touched, they're, they're just uh, um, troubled by that. People treasure their, their career, their, their jobs, their business. Everyone has, has something. Everyone has a treasure. Everyone has a motivation, something that, that moves us, something that wakes us up in the middle of the night, something that we, we worry about, or something that makes us very, very happy, or makes us very, very angry, or sad, or disappointed. This is the treasure, whether we like it or not, or whether we admit it or not, but this is my treasure and your treasure. Jesus said it today in a very nice way. He said, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Whatever you, you treasure, this will occupy your heart. And this will fill your life. And this will direct your life. Even if uh, non-intentionally, without any intentions, whatever comes in your heart will be the driving uh, 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 power or force in your life. So what's in my heart and what's in you, with your heart? To tell you the truth, it's not easy to know. Why? Because it's, it's, it's very deep down, deep down. Like there is no way you will find someone that will tell you, I treasure money. I care about money more than anything else. Of course, there are these you know, people who are vocal about it and you know, I respect their honesty, but a lot of us would not say that even though we act on it, or we believe in it. You will never see anyone tells you that I, I treasure my image, and my image is the most important thing in life. Never. Not even, he would not even, or she would not even uh, uh, say that to himself or to herself. But they will say, you know, I care about people. I care about, you know, no one is offended by me. I don't want to upset anyone. Uh, and, and, and so on. I'm, I'm wise and I'm wise spend, spend, I'm not a spender, I'm a, I'm a wise person, whatever it is. But deep down in, in, in the heart, there is something else. The Bible said that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. Who can know it? Who can know what's in the heart? People are addict and attach it to so many things, and they have no idea, they have no clue. Many forces are driving our lives, and we're not even aware of that. So now is the question, and, and what Jesus is asking us today, he's not asking what is your treasure, but he's asking who is your treasure? Who is your treasure? Today is the first Sunday of Lent, and it's called the Treasure Sunday. Because God is talking about money and treasure and stuff like this. And what is your treasure? And, you know, uh, is your treasure money? And don't lay up for yourselves treasures on earth and all of this. The question here, where is you really your heart? Where is your heart? And if you don't know where it is, it's not a problem. But at least this is the time that we should go and find out what's there. This is the time that we clean that. This is the time we adjust that. This is the time we redirect ourselves. That's why we're fasting. We're not fasting to, to just bother our, our digestion system and, and bother our schedule and, and you know, be annoyed with fasting. No, it's a time of dedication in order to readjust my path completely. Jesus telling us today in, in the reading of the gospel 
Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. What Jesus is saying is, if you treasure things here on earth, it can be destroyed one, one way or another. Not that it can be, but eventually it will be. Eventually it will be. No matter where you treasure or wherever you treasure, the message here is do not invest in things because everything is just going to go away. You know exactly like what? Like people who invested in bad stocks, you know, Someone is working on a company, you know, all these dot-com companies that just drop down dead in no time. A lot of people put millions over there. All their money, all their work for years. And in one day, all of this crashed. It's gone. There's no track of it. This would be sad at an end of our lives that we, we see our investment there is zero. Whatever we invested in is gone. It's nothing. Sometimes God make people see that here on earth before they see it in heaven. Some people at the end of their lives, you find no one around them. No one. Lonely. After years, what is your investment? What did you do? What happened during all these years? No friends, no family, no nothing. What Jesus is trying to say today is, do not invest in things, but invest in a relationship. In relationships in general, but especially in a relationship with God. That's why the last verse here, he said, but seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Don't worry about things. They will eventually come. But work on the one thing that you will never lose, that no one will ever take it away from you. Work on the best stock in the market. It is the best one. It is the one that is guaranteed by the blood of Christ, by the cross, by the church, by the Holy Spirit, by his body and blood that is guaranteed. Everything else is not guaranteed. As a matter of fact, Jesus is saying that it will go away. Invest in a relationship that will last for eternity. Or, if you don't invest in this relationship, one day you will go and hear something like this that was read in the Matins Gospel. A little bit disturbing. He says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Like, don't come in the end and knock and say, Hey, I'm here. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven, many will say to me in that day, the judgment day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Meaning we preached your name, we talked about the Bible, the gospel, the prophecies, and all of this. Cast out demons in your name. This one scares me. Do you know these holy people that cast out demons? Some of them, God does not say any word in the Bible that does not happen. When he says, many will come in my name in the end, will say, we cast out demons in your name, this will happen. These people are casting out demons in the name of Jesus. They will come in the end and they will have no place. What? And, and done many wonders in your name. We did great things. We served you. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. That's a tough one. Doesn't this sound like what we heard last week in, 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 in the first love campaign? You have labored and have not grown weary. You worked very hard for my name. But I have one thing against you that you have left your first love. It's a relationship. It's not the good works that we do. It's not, it's good. The good works are great. And, 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 and helping is great. 
and serving is great, and casting out demons is great, and preaching the gospel is great. But in the end, it's just one stock is going to stay. A relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the time to examine that. That's time to make a decision, a conscious decision, that Jesus will be my treasure. Can we do that? He wants that. He wants today that we make a conscious decision. Tell him, Lord, you will be my treasure. Look at, the, at, at this psalm that was read in the matins of today's readings. Beautiful psalm. David says, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. He said, I will. What does it mean? Can, can anyone say to, like, can someone tell his, his, his fiance, I will love you? Like, I don't love you now. I will love you. What does that mean? I'm making a commitment today. Maybe I don't now. Maybe I'm not on the right track. But I promise, I will love you, Lord. My strength, you are my strength. The Lord is my firm support and my refuge, my deliverer. My God is my helper. I will hope in him. What does that mean? From now on, I'm making a decision that I will treasure the relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. He will be my first and last. He will be my Alpha and Omega. He will be my first love and, and last love. He will, I will love the Lord from all my heart. It is a conscious decision. It is a conscious decision. It's not a feeling. Don't wait until you feel that you love the Lord from all your heart. Well, anyone can say, I love the Lord from all my heart. Say whatever you want to say. It's not, a, it's not a feeling, but it is a decision that you make. It is a choice you make. And God is telling us today, choose a smart choice. Choose the right stock that will never be taken away from you. It will help you in this life and the life after. When you look at our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes we deal with God as we deal with a machine that doesn't have any feelings. One-way communications, meaning, this is my prayer, this is my fasting, this is what I'm going to do, this is what I'm doing with my life, regardless if this is what you want or not, if this is what you like or not. You know exactly as if someone has a child, okay, and he or this mother or whatever feeding the child any kind of food. He likes it, he doesn't like it, it's poisonous, it's bad, it's good food, it's not feeding at all, whatever. Whatever I give you, you take and that's it. One-way communication. But if you invest in the relationship, I see what makes the other person happy. That's why he says, not everyone who knocks and says, Lord, Lord, open to me, but he who does the will of my Father, he who pleases me, he who wants to please me, he who wants to do the thing that I like. And God doesn't ask for much. He doesn't ask for much. He says, desire me. I will be good to you. I promise. I've never let down anyone before. Just taste, taste and see how good, how gracious is the Lord. Just taste. Sometimes we, 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 we just get mad at our kids when they don't want to even taste food. Okay? Just taste. And in the end, of course, we do the Egyptian way. We shove it in their mouth. Okay? And of course, pr proudly, they, they seem like they don't like it. But after two bites, they love it. They love it. And they say, you know, we want more of this. Just taste, taste and see how good is the Lord. Let's take this decision today. Let's take a stop. Let's take a stop before, you know, at the beginning of Lent and say, 
I'm just going to take one day off and sit and examine my life. Where am I going? What's in my heart? How do I treasure the Lord? And how do I treasure a relationship with Him? Doesn't He deserve a day off? Think about it. Sunday is not His day. Think about it. We're, we're cheating Him on Sunday. Sunday is our day. is our fun day. It's not really the Lord's day. We steal Sunday from Him. I'm going to see how many people go to restaurants today and, and go out and, you know, do their own thing. That's good. I'm not saying don't do that. Let's just give him a day. Just one day. Half a day in the beginning of this Lent. And see where your life is. Stop things for a se- You know, that's actually the purpose of Lent. That's why in, in, in fastings, we don't have any celebrations. We don't have weddings. We don't have engagements. We don't have anything. Basically, we're shutting down things. Well, the church's business is to do weddings and engagements, stuff like this. No, no business during Lent. Why? Because we're focusing. We're stopping things. We're almost stopping life. Why? Because we want to focus on the one and the most important uh, person and the most important relationship. If If you want to invest, ask the smart people. They will tell you that the time to invest is now. Can't say next week or the week after or when taxes come. You know, when, when, when the tax refunds come, you know, they will go in, in, in so many directions. If you want to invest, invest now. People who invest, they accumulate wealth regularly and consistently. Every single day, they add up something. They're not buying new cars every day. They're not moving into new houses every day. They're stocking. They're, they're investing, they're saving, they're working on that day in and day out. Just very quickly, I'm just going to leave you with three things. If you get a time to spend with God and, and recommit your love to him, think about three ways to invest in a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Number one, time. Time may be the most important commodity these days. You can never replace time. You can never get it back. Time is so precious. For me, it it is the most important thing or the most precious thing in my life is time. How much time you spend with God and how much you will and you will decide to spend with the Lord every day, it will say what is your Invest. Is he really your investment or not? Your daily quiet time, the liturgies that you attend, the service, the readings, the time that you spend with the lover of your soul. I'm afraid that we attend a lot of things, but the personal thing, the personal, the one-on-one is missing. And the Lord is, is thirsty for that kind of love. Second is money. I was surprised when I saw a, a, um, a smart person in finance who doesn't care about anything except money says something like astonishing statement. He says, the way you spend your money declares or tells us exactly what are your values. What are your values? What you treasure, okay? If you see a credit card bill or a, or a bank account bill that, that's full of junk food and, and eating out and nonsense and, and, and toys and stuff like this, you say, this is irresponsible person. You see another statement that doesn't have anything except money transfer to the saving account, that's a smart person. That's someone who cares about investment. That's someone who cares about money. And if this person doesn't spend on anyone, he doesn't care about people. Money is more important than anything else. The way you spend tells you exactly what your values are. And those who give and those who help also show that. Put your money where your mouth is. Don't just try to juggle the 10% and how can you do the 10%? 10% is for the... I don't want to say the word, but it's for the limbs who can do anything except the minimum, okay? But those who want to invest, make no mistake about it. 
the more you put in a relationship, the more you cherish this relationship. And the more it will become more important than anything else. But if you don't invest anything in it, it doesn't worth anything. It's a real investment. The third is relationships, because you know, it's, you know, it's, it's always sad, tell me who your friends are, or I'll tell you who you are, okay? If you hang out with the wrong people, the, the people who will never help your relationship with the Lord, you will never improve and invest in that, such a relationship. But in your, if you invest in a KFG, or a small group, or godly people, or godly friendship, even though it's not easy and it's time commitment and all of this, it tells me that you are serious about that. Because these people will help you, will encourage you. We all need encouragement. You don't need the other effects outside. I promise you, you don't need this time. And try it. Stop these effects that are, that are outside, and you will find it much, much, much easier. Get together with people who love the Lord. You will love the Lord. Invest in a relationship with someone who loves God, even if you get out of your way, out of your schedule, out of everything, to build a new relationship that you don't have time for. It will help you. In the end, without that, we will be lost. That's where confusions come. That's where emptiness come. That's where worry come. Because I don't see the future. I don't, I don't know what the future holds for me. But he gives me security. He gives me a clear purpose. I'll conclude by this. People used to eat in order to survive and live. You know, like God made food originally, long, long time ago. So people would eat so they can live. It's no more the case. We eat in order to enjoy and entertain ourselves. If we're depressed, we eat. And if we're happy, we eat. And in between, we eat, okay? So food now is just filling a lot of emptiness inside. That's why it's, it's, it's hard to fast and it's inconvenient to fast because food is no longer a, 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 way, of, a, a way to survive. No, it's, 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 a, it's a way of, of entertainment. And I'm, I'm not saying anything negative about that. It's good to entertain. But that God, the church is telling us, stop entertainment, okay? This is not time on entertaining now. Focus on the one and the only thing. Every time you're hungry, okay, don't think about how to be creative in a fasting food. That's not the point. The point is to be hungry for him. Hungry for a relationship with him. This hunger, I promise you, is not hunger for survival. It's hunger for emptiness, for, for fullness. And, and what we're seeing really, what we're seeking really is that uh, fulfilling and, 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 and life purpose relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Amen.